Hello everyone, it's September week five. Now I know that some of you were probably expecting a brand new prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium this week. And of course, because it's a five week month, we've got one more week to go. Um, so we've decided to set a wild card challenge for this week, meaning that you can either carry on with the artist inspired prompt that we've been doing for the month, or you can do something entirely different, entirely up to you. Um, now I'm going to be creating an ephemera holder today and I'm going to be using this arts and crafts paper pad here so I'm sort of kind of continuing with the artist inspired theme. This paper pad is inspired by William Morris. Um, William Morris of course was a British um, textile designer um, during the arts and crafts movement here in the UK. Um, so many of you, I'm sure, are, are familiar with um, William Morris. And so this is what I'm going to be using today. Absolutely love these papers. This paper pad is by Do Crafts Paper Mania, by the way. And let me just give you a flip through of the gorgeous designs that are inside here. We've got two pages each. It is single sided. It has the most amazing texture. It's just gorgeous. And I think you've seen me use this this before in projects as well so there we go a quick um, flip through isn't that one beautiful there now to start off with I've chosen these two papers here I like this bold one that I want as the cover for my ephemera pack and because these are single-sided I want this one here to go on the inside and um, so I'm going to be gluing these together I just think those two designs work really beautifully together um, now, I'm going to be using my hoogie board, my um, paper scoring board. I don't think this hoogie board is available um, anymore, but um, there are just so many different um, paper scoring boards out there. Memory, um, we are memory keepers have um, a really good one, I do believe. Now, my paper measures 12 by 12 inches, so I'm going to score on the pattern side to start off with at six inches. So that's my first piece of paper. So let's just fold on that line. And as I always say, when you are scoring on a scoreboard, fold your paper in this way from where you've um, scored. So that's that side. Um, and then the next one, I'm going to score on the back um, just because I want mine back to back. Let me just line this up with these sides. So again, I'm going to score at that six inch line. And again, I'm just going to fold in this way. Here we go. This um, saves your paper from splitting and um, creasing. So there we go. Sometimes um, the, the fibres fall apart. So this will give me the opportunity now to stick these together. Now, of course, um, I need to glue them. I'm going to use just a regular Pritt glue stick to do this. But first of all, what I'm going to do, because this is far too big, let me just um, show you this way round. I'm just going to cut this at six inches, just so that I've got two. It's way too big, so why waste it? So I'm going to um, end up with two pieces of paper that are six by six inches. So I've got my two pieces of paper here that um, now measure six by six inches. So let's just start off by doing one. What I'm going to do, I've, I've got a piece of parchment paper here to work on to catch um, the excess glue. I'm just going to start off by putting some glue down the central line here just to hold my pages together. And then I'm just going to slot this one here into the centre and just make sure that those are really neatly tucked together at the um, center just just like that there we go we can wipe off um, any excess glue and then I am going to apply glue all over the edge like this concentrating on making sure that I've got plenty all around the um, edges um, but I do want glue over the whole of this piece here as I've said just using my glue stick glue stick is a dry glue which means that your paper won't buckle so this is my preferred method sticks fabulous um you know it's um it holds together really really well in my opinion but you could use fabritac um or three in one if you wanted to as well i do find that that stiffens paper when you're using it um all over so there we go we've got um, our glue like this fold it over it doesn't have to be perfect because we can trim this off later um anyway and just press that down with a bone folder Let's just do the same um, now on this side here. 
and then of course I need to apply glue to the other side here as well in exactly the same way so I'm just going to do that to both pieces of paper if you've got um, any glue on your paper, just use a baby wipe just to gently rub the glue away. I've got um, a little bit um, down here in the bottom corner. There we go. So um, we'll just gently wipe, wipe that away. There we go. That's gone. Do the same on the other side if you need to as well. Same in the centre. And then I'm just going to prop this up like this and set it off to one side for the glue to dry. Now, once your glue has had five or ten minutes um, for the glue to dry, glue stick doesn't take very long. You'll end up with something like this, but inevitably you will end up with some um, uneven edges. I'm just going to take this off to my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim this down to five and three quarter by five and three quarter inches because, of course, this is a six by six inch square. So that will just get rid of any of those messy edges. Now, I cut my folder down to five and three quarters by five and three quarters so of course that's neatened up all of my edges so I'm happy with that and now I want to make some pockets to go inside my ephemera holder now I'm going to be using one of these plastic um, wallets here it's nice thick plastic um, these came in a set of three for a pound from either home bargains um, or poundland I can't remember now um, but if I had some of these um, what have I done with it if I had some of these wallets I would probably have used one of these um, because it would have been cheaper and this is still quite nice um, plastic you know it's nice and sturdy it's just that you can see the state of this one here this is a really old one I don't have any new ones so I'm going to use this instead I'm not going to lose, lose sleep over a pound now I hope you can see this of course you know it's it's clear but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off to my paper trimmer and I'm going to take the sides off both sides then I'm going to cut off the flap um, and that will then leave me with here's one I prepared earlier so I've taken these sides off as you can see taken the um, flap off and of course this has left me um, with this so nice and easy to use because of course we've already got one edge that is folded now as I've said this is cut to five and three quarters I'm going to um, cut this at five and six eighths um, down here and then I shall cut it five and six eighths this way um, and that will just give me a pocket to go inside my ephemera holder so as soon as I've done that I'll be straight back okay now I've got um, my sheet that is going to go in the center here like that so um, that's cut really well and these are all the leftover pieces that I've got from the wallet um, of course I've got the other piece that was connected to this one here um, and what I'm going to do is use these to create some pockets and let me just talk you through what I'm going to do I want to pocket on the front and a pocket on the back that will measure the width of this which is five and six eighths in my case of course you could do this to your own sizes if you wanted to and I want that one to be four and a half inches tall um, so I'm going to use this I'm going to cut it at um, four and a half inches which will leave me two inches here um, left over and I'm going to um, apply that to the inside front and back cover so that's that piece taken care of and then I want to make some pockets for the whoops there's a long one I want to make some pockets for the inside of this um, this plastic sheet here and I want four smaller pockets this time I want one that's the total width here which of course is five and six that six eighths um, but I want that to be two inches tall I want another one on top of it that will also be two inches tall and the same for this side here so this is what I'm going to cut out of my pieces um, of leftover plastic um, and I will leave this for you all of these measurements here that I'm using today I will leave in the description box below for you let me show you these measurements again I've just done them in black ink um, I also made a mistake as well because of course the ones that I want um, for the inside um, front and back cover need to be slightly longer because this is um, five and three quarters not five and six eighths so we've got five and six eighths by four and a half we want two of those five and six eighths by two inches we want four of those and then five and three quarters by two and a half and we want two of those so let me just show you how I'm going 
going to put this together. I've just gone and grabbed a piece of black cardstock because I think you can probably see this better. Now, these are the two pieces that I have cut at five and six eighths by four and a half inches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on the front like this and one um, on the back. So that will form a little pocket on the front and back side of this wallet. So, of course, it opens up like like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a small bead of glue just on either end of my, my wallet um, just to be able to, to stick it down. I'll do it on this side here. Um, and then I'm just going to stick that down, one to the front and one to the back. So let me just uh, bring in a piece of parchment paper. I'll just um, show you um, this because of the way it's being cut is um, rolling in. I don't know whether you can see. So I'm going to apply my glue on that side there. I'm just going to use um, my three in one and out of this fine nozzle bottle. And I'm just going to apply a really fine bead of glue along here like this and exactly the same on the bottom just just like that and then I'm just going to attach that to my wallet there we go and then I shall take this off to my sewing machine once I've applied the pockets to the to the front as well and sew all the way around the edges so this time I'm going to apply the glue here like this again Let's just do one of these and then you'll see exactly what I'm doing. And this here is just to hold it in place, um, ready for, for sewing so that it doesn't slide, slide all over the place. There we go. And I'm just going to apply that one there to the, to the back. So there we go. And I'm just going to weight that down underneath a heavy book just for a second or two. Whilst that's weighting down underneath a heavy book, I'm just going to glue these two down here like this. So exactly the same thing. I'm just going to apply glue just to the sides. I'm not applying any to the bottom. I don't need to. I just need to be able to hold the sides in place. So again, I'll just show you one, one of these um, because the other side will be exactly the same. So just apply a small bead of glue there like that and start off at this edge here. If I sort of do it on the table, at least I know that um, I've got it. In fact, I think I might need to take a smidge um, just off the end there like that because otherwise it's not going to um, fold. So I don't know whether you can see, I've got, in fact, bring back my paper. I've got um, a very slight overhang. Um, that's okay, that's fine. And I'm just going to glue the other one down onto the other side um, as well. Just taken that off to the paper trimmer and just slice that um, excess away. So I'm going to pop this into a um, heavy book and bring back the um, other one now, which should be um, dry enough for me to work on. So of course I've got my pocket here on the front, pocket on the back. So I now want to, um, work on the pockets for the inside so of course I've got four strips here that measure five and six eighths the width of this by two inches um, deep and the reason I glued um, the front and back on first was that this is going to form the line as to where I have this one here so I shall have that one there and this one here like like that so again in exactly the same way I am just going to glue these four strips strips down so just applying glue to the two sides top and bottom so whilst the other one's drying for a second or two i'm just going to take this off to my sewing machine and i'm just going to go all the way around like this all the way to the other side and then i shall sew here and here as well um, of course if you don't want to sew yours you could have added a line of glue along the bottom here you could even have used um, red tape as well so that might have been um, a better option for those of you that um, that don't want to sew so as soon as I've um, taken this off to my sewing machine I'll be straight back I do need to make a decision um, which side I want to um, sew on because of course there's a right and a wrong side so I think I'm going to sew from this side here so that the nice 
insert stitching um, is on the front. This is what my ephemera book looks like now that um, I've done my stitching. So that's what it looks like on the inside. So of course we've got the messier stitching on the inside here and hopefully you can now see why I didn't need to apply any glue to the bottom because of course I knew that I would be stitching my pockets in. So we've got the pockets um, here on the inside front and back cover. That's what it um, looks like on the front and you can see that I've started off here, I've gone all the way around like this and then I've just added a line of stitching here and um, stitching here which you can um, see better on the um, inside here just to make sure that these two edges here are firmly stuck stuck down. Now I've realised that um, I've made a faux pas on this because of course I need to add a row of stitching along the bottom here and of course if I do this I'm going to go straight through the flap that um, I've applied to the front so I'm going to take these off, um, take this to my sewing machine and I'm just going to stitch this line here and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to stick those straight um, back on. So here we are, I've just sewn um, along here like this and I'm now just going to glue my front and back flap back on like this. I've just taken the glue away just by wiping it off with um, a piece of kitchen towel so I'm just going to glue them back on. This is my inside pocket now that um, all the sewing is done and of course I've got the two smaller pockets on the inside and then the two larger pockets um, on the back and so that's just going to slot into the cover like like that. Now I'm just going to use a very basic pamphlet stitch. This is so so easy to do just to sew this in but what I need to do first is just measure where I want my holes to go. So let's just grab um, a sharpie marker we want um, one hole at two and three quarter inches so about oh in fact let me use the the other side so of course this measures um, five and a half inches so two and three quarters I want one um, an inch in from the edge about there like like that and one an inch in here and that should that should do fine then what I'm going to do make sure you get this the right way up before you um, start poking any holes I'm just going to line this up here like this and make sure that that's um, well and truly pressed into the crease I'm going to clip it down one side flip it over and clip it the other as well. What have I done with the other clip um, I had? There we go. And then I'm just going to use um, a pokey tool. So following where those um, marks are there. So we'll have one hole here. These are just here for a guide and one here as well. There we are. And let me just show you what those holes look like there. And then I've threaded up um, an upholstery needle. So here we go with some waxed thread. And this is this one here and this is 0.5 millimetre. It does say on here somewhere. Here we go, 0.55 millimetre of um, pure Raimi wax um, linen thread. So that's what I'm going to be um, using to sew my signature together. This will wipe a off. bit of acetone. We'll get that um, off. I'll do that in a second. So I'm going to start off by coming in through the middle of my signature, holding onto that tail. You don't want to use uh, lose that back in through um, one of the other holes. It really, really doesn't matter which one. This is the fiddly part. Just find where you've poked um, those holes. This is so easy, guys. Um, any of you can, can do this. And then out through the final, final hole there like that. And then back in through the middle. And I want to try and make sure that I've got one of the threads on one side of this middle part here and one um, on the other. So let's see if I can do this. Here we go. Just just like that. Um, the thread, by the way, measured two and a half times the width of my little booklet. So now I've got um, one thread on the left of this middle piece, one on the right. I'm going to give it a big tug, one in this direction, one in this direction. And I'm just going to tie um, a double a double knot just to secure everything in place. So that's one knot and here's the second knot. And then I'm just going to cut off the excess thread. Now I'm sure you'd like to see what it looks like full of goodies. So I filled this one with um, various bits and pieces of ephemera. And just look how gorgeous it looks. 
Um, now, you could use these in a number of different ways. I mean, these would just make the perfect thing to take on your travels. I'm going away in a couple of weeks' time. Um, and, you know, this would just be absolutely brilliant for me to take with me if I want to do some bits and pieces of collage or creating whilst I'm away. They'd make wonderful Happy Mail gifts as well. I mean, who wouldn't like to receive um, one of these? Now, of course, I can never stop at making one. I have the other half of the pieces of paper. So I've made this one here. This is exactly um, the same. The only difference is that the threads are on the outside, whereas, of course, with this one here, the threads are on the inside. I also made two different designs. I absolutely love this one here. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so, of course, this one here, we've got the green paper on the inside. This is all from that William Morris um, Art Deco set. I just think this paper is absolutely beautiful. And I don't think you'll be able to pick this up on camera, um, but it's got um, a textured um, effect as well. Um, now, this one here is slightly different because instead of doing these smaller pockets, I just did four large pockets. So it's got... Um, one on the back, um, two on the inside and this one here on the back as well. And then, of course, the um, pockets also on the inside and um, outside back cover. Can't get into this one. Um, so that's that one there. I love the design of that paper. I think it's absolutely stunning. I also made this one here. Now, this was my practice one, um, the first one I made. Um, and the rough stitching is on the outside because um, I stitched it from um, this way around. So, of course, we've got the nice stitching on the inside. I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever. So, you know, if you think you've made a mistake, I personally wouldn't worry about it. I think they're equally as beautiful. Now, this one's slightly different because this has got the smaller pockets um, on the outside and the large pocket um, on the inside. But I just think these are absolutely fabulous. But, you know, I just love it when it's full, full of things. It's um, just eye candy, isn't it? I could make things like this. Um, all day long. I just I just love so them. So just to recap, um, because it's a five week month, we've opted for a wild card for this um, fifth week, um, meaning that you can either carry on with the artist inspired theme if you choose to, as I've done here, op clearly opting for um, a William Morris or Art Deco style, or you can do something entirely different. All we ask is that you keep the wild card just for this week and don't use it um, as an excuse to post non-prompt related um, posts in the group in future. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. Of course, don't forget to go and check out what Kylie and Olmert have been up to this week. I'll leave the links as always to their videos in the description box below. But if you've enjoyed my ephemera booklet uh, project this week, as always, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. Do let me know what you think in the comments below. And most importantly, thanks for watching. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.